Good morning, everybody. It is brand new work week. It's Monday, and I am pretty excited. I am. We come home. The community's in a brownout. They do brownouts here on Sunday sometimes. Conserve power, do maintenance on big generators and stuff. But us, we don't feel it because we are on solar. So while the rest of the community is all uh, sitting with no fans and in the heat, we're still chilling in the AC and just enjoying life and made me really come home and appreciate my solar as well. Well, we're gonna get this day started. Hey Marvin, will you start out and get all the empty water jugs? Put them here in the back of the Toyota and we'll run up here and go pick up. I think we have a few jugs that are ready right now. We have some still there. So grab those and we'll go pick those up and drop these off. Yeah, get our day started. I hear them already up here with tools, stripping forms. Everybody is right on it. Well, strip forms, look here, can you see that? That is a wall poured right there. We are all the way up and, and kiss the column. The column got a kiss by the wall. And so uh, now we're here, uh, now we're here on this other side. We've already been prepping everything there and we're about to do the same thing again right there. It's pretty cool. I think what I'm gonna do before I pour that side is uh, do some inside walls. Do some dividing walls on the inside over against the side we've already poured well let me get this day started the guys are already jumping on it and we'll see you in just a bit Just got done moving those solar panels. Who at sun that morning? The sun was hot and staring right up into it over there. Uh, we'd done all broke a sweat. Man, Miller was moving those. Well, you see, I got six solar panels sitting right there still. And those are all connected and going right this moment. But 
you know they're in our way they're absolutely in our way and we're about to be building across there and you know there was 12 panels so up here on this bamboo here at this terrace i've got six of the panels up here kind of spin around here and go the other way and right there as well and this is another temporary fix but uh i mean this this bamboo is really put up here strong i seriously doubt anything's going anywhere so we got them tied off up here at the moment and i need to make all the connections i've got these three connected and a wire going to the combiner box but these three right here are not connected. So I got a piece of PV cable here that's got some MC4 connectors on one end that I put on in the past, but I don't have any on the other end the where it was being used, it was connected direct without an MC4 connector. So I need to go ahead and put some connectors on the other end of this cable. I don't want to cut the cable to length or nothing right now uh, because like I say, this is constantly fluid being moved and uh, I don't want to chop in my cables that I might need for a long run later on. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, get those ends on there. I've got soldering iron up here. I like to solder them uh, where the wires go into these pieces here. I don't like just to crimp that. I, I put the wire, the cable down in there. I fill that up with solder and I crimp it and solder it one more time because you want the best and most corrosive free connection you can get, especially being by this salty environment right here. So uh, that's what I'm gonna be doing there. All right, here I am. I got my MC4 connectors on. Here you are, you got a positive and a negative. See, it says positive on that one. And you got your negative mark right there on that one well folks I'm a little aggravated I just now found out that um, there's another another foreigner that is trying to take all of my crew seriously uh, then then make contact for my whole crew to come work for him not when I'm done with my place. Not like that. I'm trying to take my whole crew right now while we're in the middle of building. I noticed over the past few days, they all been acting weird and kind of like I don't give a darn and just moving slow. The cow can be standing in the greenest, sweetest grass there is, but it will still push its head through barbed wire to the other side just to find out if the grass is sweeter on the other side and uh i'm i'm aggravated i ain't gonna lie i'm aggravated and they didn't come to me directly i found it out through an indirect channel yeah but there is another foreigner trying to take my entire crew everybody everybody i've put together there everyone i've tried to put together my family and you know it's aggravating because uh they unbelievable unbelievable there's jealousies there's others in the family that are backbiting it, it's a pain now they may stay right there with me, but I tell you, uh, just the whole prospect of someone trying to grab up your workers while they're still working for you, I'm more aggravated with that than anything. Who knows? I don't know, I can only speculate. I have no facts here. I know it's a fact that someone, a foreigner is trying to take my workers. I know that, my whole crew, I know that is a fact, but you know, what would be the benefit of them leaving? What would be the benefit? Well, let's see. They wouldn't have to do my kind of work, which is really nice, and I make them do things perfect right. They would be able to possibly do their sloppy work and use hollow block, post and beam, as they call it, you know, uh, column and beam with hollow block fill, rendering, which is what they know best. That's what they know. 
so they could do their regular old slap it up work you know so that would be a benefit to them so uh, so that'd be one benefit and then has the this foreigner as he tried to sweeten the pot maybe offer more money or promise him I'm gonna do this for you that for you I tell you that's the one I'm most aggravated with yep yep that's the one well this is the way life can be got one of these glow max little small solar panels right here it's on my 12 volt system as you'll see it says it's 21.6 volts but this is for charging a 12 volt system uh maximum power current rider maximum power bolt to see 18 volts open circuit voltage 21.6 this is for my 18 this is for my 12 volt system right here and glow max is the brand that was on this i like them they're pretty good panels they work great one of the uh connectors broke right off on the back and the wire pulled right in two so I'm gonna to, I opened up the back here and uh, I'm gonna go in here and re-solder that right now. But yeah, I was really, really shocked out of what this thing did and broke like that. Just, I mean, just, just moving it and it just snapped off. Even when I was removing this just now, these just snapped right off. No flexibility to them at all like they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be a little latch that you open. Try to pull it. You may have somebody go up there at the top and pry that plywood. Up, up here, no, go up here or right here. Maybe you can hook that plywood right there. No, right here. Get it right here. No, right here. Get this sheet. Go right here. Break this sheet loose. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Hold on, hold on, Miller. Let him get it all the way down. This is kind of stuck there. That's where we we got a wall that's gonna come out right there. See? Piece of cake, boy. Easy peasy. Oh, that plywood's in the way. Help, help them, help them, put that bucket down. Yeah, but we need to take it out because we don't need it here. Don't break it though. Just lay it over there on that plywood for now. Yeah, let's continue. That looks pretty good. We can wipe all this off. It's not perfectly clean, but it can be cleaned up. It's not near as clean of an edge, but it's still okay. Not bad at all. See how that... Now, everybody watching that right there, that's where the wall's joining in, so we don't expect that to be clean right there. All this steel coming out, that's where a wall's going to join. Same thing over there, another wall's joined. So the wall part itself looks pretty good. Yeah. All this little stuff here, as I always say, just wipes off. Yep. Just wipes off here. Yep. So this is where a wall will join in here and make the pantry. That's where a wall will join in and make the pantry and the wall for the bedroom. 
we're starting to get rained out here and I'm gonna have to go close up the back of my Hilux, sir. We got a low pressure coming. It's moving up this way from down by Bahal and Cebu, down that part of the country. Moving up here towards the central and western Visayas uh, into the southern Luzon area. So uh, I know our friends Jay and Jen that was live streaming this morning and we were visiting with them and having a little joke. It was pouring down rain there and that rain is moving this way. And they were like on the edge of it down there, the southern edge. But we, oh, they're pulling more, but we are right in the heart of it. So we may actually get more rain than they did. So this is up here in the bedroom wall at the very front, the very front of the house. So far what I see looks good. It looks nice. Very happy so far. Let's see, pull the next one. Oh man, yeah, just that little old small stuff that's stuck there on it just wipes off the wall. That's a good part of a bedroom wall right there. They took too many screws out of this form, so they gotta put it back together right now. Well, the weather's been a mixed bag today. It's not like it's gonna rain. We got a low pressure coming in. I told them some of them spread out and do a little bit of work downstairs. If it rains, it rains. If it don't, it don't. We're still making progress no matter what. So I got one of those smaller diamond cup wheels right here, four inch. And I had to aim to start just going around up in these tight places, forming the corners nice and square, getting a little rough edges out and all, and just dressing up with it. And that's what he's been doing. You can see the mess here grinding off these joints like this right here and then we'll come back with that skim coat which is like a filler and float that all out hitting all of these joints here everywhere so he's been prepping all of that and we're gonna start skim coating these rooms here very very soon over here with the room with the crap block they are doing what they do chisel a groove, cut and chisel a groove for a conduit. So this is your comparison video right here. That conduit that I lay in nice and perfect in the walls. This room is my sacrifice room to give you guys a chance to understand a comparison right here on this job site. So no, I did not want to hollow block these rooms. I honestly did it for the sake of video, for the sake of teaching and showing. So there's the Filipino way, chip a groove, chip a groove, lay in a pipe, come back in, render over the top of it. Yeah. You see, just imagine how long that's going to take just to get a tube in there. I can have that all attached inside my forms in just a few minutes, cast the concrete, pull the forms, all this is over with. And this is their way. That's another conduit right there. All this chipping on a beam, this is their way. Because now they gotta render all of this. You see all this? Look at that, compared to that. Look at that, have a look, have a look. Look at that, compared to that. So, this wall, including this great big column, huge column in there, that wall, including that beam, including that column, all the way down, all of that wall and those columns, when we mix that right there, use less concrete than what they're gonna have just in this little wall here with no columns and that tiny little uh, beam. You're gonna, by the time they render it, they're gonna be out way more concrete, way more time, and both of them have steel in them. You're still gonna have that column even in your hollow block build. You still got steel inside that hollow block, horizontal and vertical. So 
you tell me the difference. So the difference is you bought some sheets of plywood and you cast it and you made it clean. Look at that. See that? Look at that. So you bought some sheets of plywood, you drill some holes in them, you bought some PVC, you cut them off at four inch or five inch or six inch, however much money you want to spend, how thick you want to make your walls. They don't need to be no five or six inches, but hey, whatever. Float your boat. I mean, you buy some one stick of PVC, makes a lot of four inch pieces. You go up to a, a city somewhere, they're all over the Philippines, these big hardware stores like Far Eastern. Google Far Eastern. They have it. Long sticks of all thread. You cut that all thread off long enough to run through your form, through your cocoa lumber, and with nuts and washers. Buy the nuts and washers there at Far Eastern also. So you're gonna have either half inch, three quarter inch plywood. So add an inch to an inch and a half for that so you got thickness of the wall four inches say three quarter inch plywood now you're at five and a half inches cocoa lumber's two inches and it's going to be on each side now you're at nine and a half inches you need room to work so you got some thread you got some washers going on there for your nuts and all so cut them off one foot and that all thread is cheap it's cheap when you chop them off, you probably have to dress the threads a little bit with a grinder on the end. Just put one of those little metal blades on a hand grinder and swirl it around the tip there. Clean the threads up. You can use those forms again and again. On a one story, a small house, Joel and I figured just uh, Saturday that 10 sheets, you could build a small house with 10 sheets of plywood, reusing them each time. Just 10 sheets, eight of them for forming your walls and two of them to cut for columns. So uh, we'll do a little math on that later. Mock Mock needs me right now. All right, you see that? Look at that. That's Half Dare. <laughs> Just call him Half Day. His name's not Mock Mock no more, it's Half Day. <laughs> we were building a single story house. This whole wall is a beam. It is a wall that can take a load and carry that load sheer all the way down to your tie beam in the ground. Still put your tie beam in. But you don't need another beam up here at the top. You don't need it at all. You could literally pour to the top, bend your steel over, take your forms, lay that right over, pour your roof right on top of it. You really can. It doesn't need all of that. And the only reason there's these big columns here is because, you know, this is a pretty big structure I'm pouring. And uh, it's going to have some additional loads on top of the house as well. But if you didn't have to deal with all of that, uh, and you're just building a small home, let's say, um, I mean, I, I can try to write up some figures. I could probably give you a pretty close estimate of what it would cost. It's not bad at all. So... Mama, how much did we say? How many when we poured that from we poured what from that steel right there, right? Saturday, right? We poured from that steel. So we poured down through here, we poured that column, we poured all this wall here. And that's eight foot tall and about eight and a half foot on the columns. And how many bags of cement did you say we used? Nine and a half bags of cement. So with that column and those walls with hollow block still with the column and then you render it how many bags you think it's going to take probably 20 yeah and a lot more time too isn't it yeah it's a huge savings so you see them down there right now on that little experiment wall i did in the cr chiseling for the conduit yeah right here we're not doing that there's no coming in and patching and a scar made on your wall yeah, now yeah, go ahead. This is a complex structure here. If it was not so complex and it was just more of a basic home, we, and once you know what you're doing, 
you can turn it out unbelievably fast. You really can. Um, finished unbelievably fast. And if you set up like that and you run a company like that and you got a place that you can keep form board dry and take it to another job, not just throw it all away, that's part of your tools and carry it to another job and another job and another house. The cost starts getting lower and lower. And, uh, you know, so if you're going to build homes, track homes in a subdivision, you can really lower the cost by taking care of your forms and using them many times over. Taking care of your lumber and using it many times over. Man, you could put the cost down super low. Okay, just remember, don't sink those too deep. And be careful, we got a conduit down below. Yeah, we got, we better, you're playing uh, with luck that you didn't hit, man. Well, I don't see no orange pipe, so I guess you got lucky. Because remember, I said we need to measure that first. Whoo! <laughs> so, uh, here we are, we're laying out for walls that's going to border between the kitchen this little uh pantry utility room and then the wall over to the bedroom and it creates a little hallway wall at the same time so the first thing we do is we lay our lines where the wall's going the wall's going to be four inches thick so you're going to need to if you're using half inch forms you're going to have to make your gap right here five inches thick allow for the plywood on each side or if it's three-fourths you're going to have to make it five and a half on the space on the inside uh, this steel here we pre-drill all the holes before we nail down that cocoa lumber we don't drive concrete nails into this because it makes tiny cracks cracks fractures inside your concrete that can grow from there it's like getting a crack in the windshield of your car you know that cracks there and it's small it's a little splinter and then all of a sudden choop, it starts splitting off well you're just creating a fracture for a crack to begin so drill your holes and uh, put your nail in there and really that all it's doing is just a, a pressure to the side that you're just pinning it you know that you're not really nailing it in like rock solid and you need to explain that if you're going to copy this method to your workers you're not trying to nail that down like to keep those boards from coming up you're just trying to pin it to keep it from going out sideways now they do make some metal brackets that you can buy and fasten to the concrete under the wall and it has a lip that comes up both sides and that your form board ties to that i'm just using a method that don't require a bunch of special hardware and you don't have to try to find all these things and bring them from another country and and do all of that so i'm i'm doing it with what's available here that's the whole point of this build you don't have to have a bunch of specialty hardware and ordering in all this gadgetry and all of that so instead of all those little sheet metal brackets you can attach to the floor and the form sets in on both sides and all i'm doing it like this and this works well so then he's drilled for the rebar and he's cleaning them holes right now and all and then what we're going to do is we're going to epoxy the steel into each one of those holes and that just guarantees me a better seal a tighter fit around with that steel in there for years to come less chance of the steel to ever rust or corrode or anything like that so there you have it it's pretty simple they'll stand their steel up here now they'll tie their steel out across vertical and horizontal then we're ready to start leaning sheets up tie a sheet on one side Set your outlet boxes or anything you need on that sheet. Prep your sheet for the other side before you put it up there. Measure, lay out your outlet boxes or switch boxes on it. Sandwich them up, put your cocoa lumber, and uh, you'll be ready to pour. Peel it off, you got a wall just near being paint ready, if you do it right. Hey everybody, well that's the end of day of another day of building here so uh had the guys doing all kinds of tasks we had decided to add in a conduit in the past here for something that uh, when the original garage was built that wasn't planned on 
So we've had a slot there. I've had them to go ahead and get that mortared in. They did their Filipino thing, mudding in boxes here and inside both. Uh, don't don't like that technique, and I think you all know it. <laughs> it it's so inadequate. Um, Ambon worked with a small four-inch diamond cup wheel, and he dressed all inside of here today, hitting edges everywhere, getting all those little burrs and stuff, because we're going to begin skim coating in there, and uh, that's not going to be far away from just finishing out that room. And as well, here in the next room, it's a duplicate story that he was once again finishing dressing up in here. And they were beginning their little chiseling, the chiseling the calm doing over here on this CR as well. They didn't get it done because it takes so darn long. Yep, and they only got one done. Because that method right there, it's no good. Got my one solar panel repaired there as I was showing earlier in the video today. Got them all plugged back up and that goes to my solar pump. So I uh, got that back going. Uh, if you want to see these right here, these are just cable wide adapters. And these panels here are all in parallel, not series. Meaning they're all positive to positive, all negative to negative. Just uh, increasing the power as far as the the amps on it you know but not increasing the voltage so that's the way they're set up right there these are just uh lower i think they're like 18 volt panels or whatever they're for charging on a 12 volt system but i got them going and uh they've been down for a bit because like I say that one lead on that one panel i was really shocked how the sun has deteriorated on that so it might want to be something you look into on buying panels because uh, that's crazy, especially if it's to the back side. Of course, those aren't my main panels. Those are just some little small panels there. I think uh, maybe one of them is 100 and the other two are 50s each or something like that. Let me look. Yep. This taller one is 100. And see, it's like 18.7 volts. And these little small ones these i bought a long time ago just for only running the solar pump 18 volt and 50 watts so 200 watts are all together and they're dirty and they're not really pointing in the right direction i just got them back up and going but i tell you they've been pumping water for hours though I'm having a nerve attack day yeah they don't feel sorry for me i'm tough enough just telling the truth that's if you see me and my eyes look really tired and all I look a little different I know probably do I see it myself I um, uh, those those attacks man literally feels like I'm being electrocuted unbelievable yeah unbelievable and you don't know when it's gonna hit and it's like all of a sudden just somebody cattle prod you you know or hit you with a stun gun this is like boom. man it's the craziest thing and it kind of moves through my body and i never know what part of the body it's going to originate from it's just like a surprise guest you know <laughs> jumps out from behind the door yeah well that's the way that's the way it is i've been living with it for years now so sometimes i don't want the only reason i'm even i just tell you this i'm i know i'm chattering here the only reason i even tell you guys about that because really it's a personal thing and i'm not looking for sympathy in any way I'm man enough, I'm tough enough, I handle it. The reason I choose to share that with you guys, I don't want anybody thinking I'm drunk, you know? Because it messes with my speech, and uh, and my eyes look tired and I'll stumble, and I don't want nobody to think that I'm boozing it up here and I look at him shooting a video drunk, because I'm not, and I'm not a heavy drinker. Um, I'm I'm a one maximum two beer person and I and I might go for a while before I have any more. Really not supposed to have any with my condition. But uh just don't want you guys to think, man, look at this dude, he's all lit and, and can't even hardly do a video or goofy or something, you know. I'm I'm goofy. I know I'm goofy. 
<laughs> that's not the nerve condition I'm goofy but um, no no sympathy or anything like that I just I just want to share because I don't want y'all thinking I'm like some white job here even with the way I was feeling I still came up here and worked but they're towards the end of the day Melinda she's been gone all day dealing with driver's license stuff again setting an LTO for endless hours there at the end of the day Marvin told me I need to go rest he saw me having those attacks he is worried he wanted to walk me down bless his heart that's somebody that loves you right there I said bro I sure appreciate that but I, that's all right I manage yeah yeah it's just uh, you know it's weird for them to see because it's just like somebody electrocuted you it's the craziest thing never get totally used to it you know <laughs> crazy thing enjoy life every day don't forget that enjoy life every day I don't let it stop me I don't think you guys see it stopping me none I've been dealing with it since 2012 yeah 2012 some times already gone by well I got a little bit of news though she got her student permit yes yeah she got her student permit got it today. she don't have a driver's license but she has a student permit to learn to drive so uh, that's pretty cool mm -hmm. and it took you how many hours sitting there five hours five hours yes, sitting so there slow. yeah some things don't change here you know uh, it's I was... aggravating sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you know like sometimes I always say, say I share, you know, I'm sorry, but anyway, I'm, I'm sometimes, <laughs> do I need to drive? Some, you know, I ask this because I wait so long. I have no patience to wait. So you ask, do you need to drive? I yeah. don't know what, I mean, what that means. What do does I, that mean? Do I really need to drive? You know, oh, okay. Do I really need to wait? Uh, this I so get long? now what you mean. <laughs> do you really need this driver's license? Is it worth <laughs> it for sitting there that long? Yeah. <laughs> you know you want it so bad, so I'm sure you're going to sit there as long as they tell you. <laughs> it's supposed to be, I'm about to say that, can I go back the next day? But the thing is, it's so hassle and maybe have um, another things that uh, for the next day. So. Yeah. Oh, I was glad you made it home. I know that. Mm -hmm. She brought me some chicken from Andox. What was I think about you? Yeah. Think you think about maybe. me. I requested it. <laughs> requested? I told you that. I messaged you if you want some Andox. <laughs> no, you said you were going to go get Andox. Yeah. But you didn't say I'm going to get us Andox. Of course, you already included in that one. Wow, you just automatically include me in everything. Yeah, yeah huh? of course. You know, because I already know that you're hungry. That's, that's not a bad wife. Pretty good. So just automatically no selfish thoughts. Uh, just well, like that. Because when I was thinking there, I said I have no time to cook already. So So if you were buying a big diamond ring, you would go ahead and buy me one also because I'm automatically included in that? Well, if I, am, uh, I have a lot of money, which we should, we should, you know, we should not. If you did that, I would choke. <laughs> well, I'm glad Mel made it home. I'm glad to close out the day. I appreciate you all watching our videos and our support. And we'll see you on the next one. Yes. Thank you all. And Ow, please... Wait. Okay, we're going to try this again because I was getting ate by mosquitoes. <laughs> so we appreciate your support. And uh, we look forward to every day getting out here working on this project and making you all a new video so you can share and see into our lives and and share how to do these projects and all you know the way we're doing it and you can probably improve on it but we thank you for the support and remember this though please remember this we are not just a build channel this is a segment of our life that's happening right now it's a chapter and every book is full of chapters so please don't label us as strictly a build channel because uh mel and i we're pretty multifaceted people and we like to roam and do a lot of things. And uh, just stick with the adventures with us, but not just for the build. And we really appreciate that. Until the next time, God bless. Thank you all. And please like, comment, and subscribe. Please don't forget to hit that notification bell. There you go. <laughs>